Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter Neal, and today I'm going to talk to you about eBay. We're just having a little chat about eBay, all things to do with eBay. Uh, should you buy it now, should you auction, and how can you improve your listings and improve your sales? Stay tuned, I really hope it helps and I hope you enjoy. Okay, just quickly before we get going guys, if you love antiques, collectibles, you're in the reseller business, then don't forget to subscribe because my channel's all about how-to videos. I go out buying antiques and I show you where everything's worth and how to identify it. So stake your claim guys, make sure you subscribe. If the videos help you and you like them, I would really appreciate a like and a share to help me keep creating videos. Let's get to it. Okay guys, so eBay, there are many other companies out there but we'll look at them on another video. This com uh, video is specially focused on eBay. Now personally 99% of my items go on a buy it now um, but a lot of people do auctions. So I've done a bit of a pros and cons on auctions and buy it nows and then we're going to look at how you can improve your sales, uh, increase your sales, increase your price you're achieving for your item. And, and so on. So we're going to start off with the auctions. Obviously in auction you tend to start items at a lower price and they find their own level so your sale rate or your success rate is far greater. Now with buy it nows you put them on you set a price and so on and they can be on there for a year or six months or even two years. Uh, so auction versus buy it now there time wise brilliant but when you look at buy it now well let me rephrase that if you look at auctions you set an auction for a three day a five day seven day ten day whatever you set it for you have to wait till the end of that auction to get paid and that's if they pay you straight away it might be a couple of days later so let's say for argument's sake years ago when i started ebay i used to do auctions and i list all my items to finish on a sunday or saturday saturday and sunday anyway and um, through the week I'd have nothing finishing so my payday would be once a week on a Sunday and if stuff didn't sell or didn't meet reserve or if I started at 18 pound and I didn't get one bid or something like that because that's what I used to do I'd set the price up I'll start that at 12 pound if it pulls 20 fine or start that at 18 if it pulls 30 or 40 fine I used to have it like a minimum start price. Now eBay encourages you to start at 99 pence. I know what the hell that's about. You can't get a cup of tea for 99 pence. But that's another story again. Um, so yeah, your timing is different. When you're selling on auction, you're restricted. And if the stuff comes off unsold then after your 10-day auction, you've got to go another 10 days before you get a payday. What I like about the buy it now is, is yes, stuff can be on there for a year, two years, three years, whatever. But if you get enough of a shop built up, you do get a daily flow of sales. <laughs> That's exaggeration to be totally honest with you. You can have a daily flow of sales, but sometimes you go a week or two without a sale. Um, there can be lulls or quiet spells on eBay, on the shops as well as everything else, guys. So I don't think you're the only one who experiences that. But yeah, generally... What I like is I got four, five, six hundred items, whatever is listed on my eBay shop. And what I love is I can I can go to the cinema and watch a film, come out and oh somebody's bought something for a hundred pounds or I you know, I'm in the bath, I come out and someone else have sold. It's that type of thing. I love the fact anything can sell at any time. So yes, the sale success is much higher um, on auction than it is on buy it now. But buy it now, you can have money dotted everywhere, all the time, and it's a lot more reliable as in, you know what you're gonna achieve. Now, with auctions, there's no set price. That's why they call them an auction, guys. It's what two people or three people or four people are willing to pay. And whoever's the highest bidder wins. Now, a lot of the times on auctions, people get auction fever and they'll bid up and then they'll change their mind afterwards because they'll think, oh God, I paid way too much. And they'll mess you about and you'll have to relist it. That's a pain in the ass with the auctions. But generally, most of them will pay. But if you look at the auctions then, and let's say for argument's sake, you, I'm going to be very careful with my wording. You take eBay's advice and you start everything at 99 pence with no reserve. I know. 
So let's say you start everything at 99 pence, no reserve, and something goes for three pound, something goes for 20 pound, something goes for eight pound. Okay, they've all sold. You got the 100% success rate you wanted. Now you've got no stock for next week, you've got to do parcels. Um, but what if that three pound item was worth 15 pound or the eight pound item was worth 35 pound? If you don't want to buy it now, you can do the research. Easiest thing in the world to do research. You just type in what you've got, look at the sold listings and go, right, well, is six sold at 40 pound, is three sold in the 25 pound? I'll go bang in the middle at 30 quid, 35 quid. Job done. Put that on for a buy it now. You wait for an offer and someone goes, oh, do you know what? I ain't willing to pay that, but I'll give you 25 or 28. And you can go, do you know what? That's better than selling it for £8 on auction. And you take the offer. So you can do best offers on your buy it now, where you can't do that on your auction. You're, you're purely at the mercy of the buyer and the mood of the buyer when you're on auction. Now, I must admit, it's exciting. I've, uh, if I can't value something... I tend to put it on auction. Uh, by calm value, what I mean is if I can't find a sold one anywhere and there's no ceiling for it. Now, I'm going to give you an example, miner's checks. Now, a miner's check is a little disc coin, if you like, that there's a few different variations. You add some that would be given as like pay checks. You add others that were lamp checks. So if you took your lamp out, they'd give you a check and you take it underground with you. And if the check was out, then they knew you were underground type thing. And they knew you had the lamp. Along them lines anyway. Um, well, I, list, I bought three car boot sale. And I filmed them last week in one of my films. And I paid a pound each for them. Those three there. They don't look like anything much, do they? Bear with me a second. That's the one. That's the one I listed on eBay. On auction at £12. Because I didn't know what it was. Well, that's so wrong. I knew what it was. But I didn't know what the price was. Now, I'd searched the internet. And the only other one for this coal colliery I could find, coal mine, was in brass. And that had sold for £60. And I thought, well, do I value that the same as a brass one, when genuinely I don't know? Or is it this metal's the earlier version and could be worth more or could be worth less? Because some of these, uh, the silver uh, metal uh, checks can be worth £2. So I took... The common sense option I went well they cost me a pound each and I listed them on eBay or I listed one of them on eBay for £12 start price so I wasn't willing to sell it for less than a tenner after my costs within a day I'd had an offer of £100 on it and I said you know what yeah I'll take £100 I'm over the moon with that I've never sold a check that price before anyway you mess me about as usual on eBay you get messed about within half hour of him messing me about the item had reached £120. So I thought, you ain't down 50 hundred now. Mess me about, it's your own fault. You snooze, you lose. So then it reached £170. And I started really getting excited. This morning I woke up, it's on £240. It's still got six days to go. Now that's the good thing about the auction. If you can't value something, then you can... Put it on auction and it'll find its own level, providing people can find it. And what I'm actually having at the moment is the excitement and the thrill of every time my phone makes that funny eBay noise, I'm jumping to the phone thinking, what's it on now? And I'm really anxious now for the next six days waiting. At the moment, we're all talking on the um, group chats. you got the uh, tat chat with Nick and Andrea Hills. Uh, that's a really good uh, little antiques uh, or reseller page, guys, on uh, Facebook. Or oh, you got my channel, which is Antiques Arena, another good one. And we're all talking at the moment, and we're all guesstimating. Some are saying, oh, it's going to pull 500. Others are saying it's going to pull 1,000. But I got three of them. I bought three of them, guys, pound each. Uh, but, yeah, you never know what's, what your stuff's going to sell for on the auction. And, you go, oh, God, you got that excitement. Honest to God, I'm buzzing in the belly at the moment thinking... What's he going to go for? And I can't wait for the 10 minutes. Because normally people on, on auctions, they use tools like Auction Sniper and things like that. And they'll have a snipe bid at the last 30 seconds of the auction. And they'll have a machine to say, this is their bid. Just as the auction's ending. So nobody got time to come back and bid against them. There's tools out there for that called Auction Sniper or things like that. And um, But... 
this has got six days to go and we've already had a battle from 12 pound to 240 pounds and if you have a look i've got some pictures coming up so that you can see them but it's really exciting so you don't get that with a buy it now because you set your price you get excited when you do your research and you find out what it's worth but you theoretically you should do that with the auction stuff as well you should always know what you're selling never sell something you don't know what it is i could have sold these mining checks for 20 or 30 pound which is the average cost of a mining's check and i'd be out, out hundreds of pounds um let me see i've made myself a little pros and cons list by here that i'm trying to follow um yeah the the last pro that realistically that i uh, i'd like to mention with um auction versus uh buy it now so the pro is for the buy it now not the auction is once you've done the work on your buy it now shop now you have a shop you haven't got to have a shop you can have a shop because they'll give you so many listings for free then and you get a lower percentage rate i got a business account um businesses don't qualify for free listing days and things like that where private sellers do which is a pain in the ass um, but nevertheless if I, once i've done the work on my shop or my buy it nows they're classed as good until cancelled the ebay no longer allows you to list them for 30 days and things like that they're all good till cancelled so once you've listed your item unless you physically cancel it or it sells you will you can forget about it you haven't got to touch that item again so you list it right wrap it up in bubble wrap put it in the box code it up so you know where to find it i've done a film on how to do the whole art as well and then you can forget about it whereas on auction once you've sold uh run it for 10 days if it don't sell and it's in your unsold box after three months you can't relist it because ebay's no longer holding the pictures and things you then got to redo the work so you can build up a really big inventory there's um, a gentleman who used to have a channel uh ken chapman and he has an absolutely amazing um, eBay business going where he has thousands of items on eBay. Um, go and check him out. He really, really knows how to do the job well. That If you want a template to work off, go and work off him, guys. Um, but yeah, he got thousands and thousands of stuff listed. And he literally turns over, well, he breaks the VAT limit on his turnover, guys. That gives you an example. And the VAT limit's 80 odd thousand. So that gives you an example of um, how successful you can be on eBay. You get out of it what you put in. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you can improve your eBay. Now, I've been, we've had a few people lately been complaining that the sales are slow and things like that. And when we actually go in and look at the items they're selling, <coughs> we find in problems. Now, the first thing that a buyer sees is a picture. They, in the thumbnail or the small picture they don't look at the ta uh, titles and ask first they look at the pictures so you've got to make sure your picture is spectacular now if you sell a small item it doesn't mean it's got to be a small photograph you can zoom right into that and that small item can still fill the screen <coughs> you tell them the size in your description so when you look at that photograph you want that photograph to fill the page it wants to be as big as you can get it or as close to the margins of your photograph as you can and as crisp and as clear as you can and don't photograph something dirty or on a messy background have a nice clean background a nice clean item and a nice sharp crisp photograph and don't just do one photograph photograph a couple of angles photograph the base photograph anything you can think they want to see you've got 12 photographs on ebay use them the more photographs the better what do they say an image speaks a thousand words so that's your first thing you've got to do make sure your photographs are bang tidy it doesn't matter if you've got to take a thousand photographs to get 12 good ones don't put them up without really really good photographs then the next thing they see is your title now you really need a decent title use capital letters in your title use keywords in your title whatever you do make sure your title is full of keywords searchable words are keywords um, for example, let's say you want to sell an 18th century drinking glass or a set of 18th century pair of Georgian brass candlesticks. So you need 18th century, you need Georgian, you need brass, you need candlesticks, you need English if they're English. You need the keywords in the title. But you don't just want a mash of keywords, you also need it to read 
correct as well. So the title should read, let's say for argument's sake it's the candlesticks, it should be a beautiful or rare pay 18th century English Georgian brass candlesticks of exceptional form or something like that. You want the title to be engaging and capture the audience. You want it to sell the item before they open it up and read the description. So you need the keywords in the in the title. You need really good imagery in the pictures. Um, and select the best image you can to be image number one because that's the thumbnail image. Then when they open it up and go into the item, it needs to be in the right category. So let's say, uh, for argument's sake, you want to sell um, a decanter. Now, do you just put it in glass? Do you put it in crystal? Do you put it in decanters? Where do you put it? Well, you need to know what you're selling. Let's say, for argument's sake, you're selling an Irish, 18th century Irish decanter. Right? Then you want to go pottery in glass, glass pre-1840, right category. Let's say you're selling a Royal Dalton crystal decanter that's brand new. You want to go pottery and glass, crystal, decanters, or category for maker, Royal Dalton. You need to place the stuff in the right category. There's no point in putting a Moorcroft bowl in standard pottery when people are searching for Moorcroft bowls in Moorcroft. Make sure the category is right. So you got the title. Make sure that's bang on. Make sure them photos are mm, you really need them good photos. Then you need the right category. Then you're halfway there to selling your item because if they can find it and you can engage that audience with your title and your photograph, then they're going to open that listing. So, you're moving on, you need your price. Now, your price has to be right. Now, as we've talked about auctions already, if you're starting in low, it's, the price is always right because they're going to find it themselves. It'll be whatever it's worth. If you're doing buy it now, like myself, try not to outprice yourself out the market. Now, I tend to be mid range to slightly above uh, average prices of what stuff achieves, but I allow a best offer option. So people can go in and they can go, well, I really don't want to pay that, but I will make you an offer. That's absolutely fine. Make me an offer. Nine out of ten times, I accept. Just don't take the monkey with me and I, you know, I will accept your offer. As long as it shows me a good profit and you're not making a fool of me or taking the mick, I will accept. And there's a lot of people like me. You get some that will knock a fiver off or tell you a bugger off, but no, majority of people will take it. So don't price yourself out the market, guys, and don't undersell your item either because you're just costing yourself money. So, Royal Dalton Vigorine, for example, right? and I'm using antiques because that's what relates to me, guys. You, this re can translate to anything you're doing, right? Uh, if the item you're selling, let's say for argument's sake, there are 10 sole listings. Forget the bottom five, because I can tell you now, the bottom five are, are usually jokes, where people who couldn't give a monkey about what they're selling, and they're just sticking on for a pound with no reserve, right? So you look at the, the top half of the sale results. And then you find an average between them. So if they if they go from twenty five to forty pound, <clears throat> go in at about thirty to ooh, thirty three pound and wait for an offer, or go in at thirty pound and wait for an offer. Or if you really want to, go in at the top price, go in at forty pound and wait for an offer. It's not an unrealistic figure. If you go in at the top price and it's still a sole price, there are still people willing to pay that price out there. So it is not unrealistic. Now, if the, if the top price sold was £40 and it was 7 sold underneath it for 25 to 30 and you went and put 60 on it, that's outpricing yourself. That's unrealistic. So you've got to make sure your price is realistic. Then you've got to go on to your item specifics. Now, let's say it's a crystal vase. So you've got to go to your, your top. It, there's a whole host of specifics and it would be what is it? Crystal. What, what is the item? De a vase. Uh, what's the colour? Blue, white. Even if it's clear, you've got to put clear. Fill in them specifics. Uh, if it asks you size and weight, put it bloody in. The more specific things you fill in on those little selectors, the more chance you've got of the eBay algorithm picking your item up for the search for the item, uh, for the person. So don't just be lazy and say, oh, buggery, I can't be bothered to fill in those specifics. Fill them in. Because I guarantee you they will improve your sales. Then you come to the description. <sighs> now, a description has to be just like your title. Very captivating. But it also has to be very factual. So you need the age of the item. 
You need what the item is. You need the condition of the item. You need the size of the item. Let's say for argument's sake it's a decanter. You want to know how much the decanter holds, so measure whatever the decanter holds. Because I guarantee you, once you photograph it, describe it, wrap it up, somebody's going to ask you that question. Guarantee you. Um, if it's got a chip or flow, put the d in the description and make sure you photograph it because I guarantee you it'll wing its way back to you and you'll be paying the refund postage and have an eBay strike. What's the point? Describe it accurately. Make sure your descriptions are absolutely perfect. If it's got a flow, tell them it got a flow. Um, but at the same time, make sure it is spectacular. So, you're going to describe a decanter. So you've got an absolute beautiful, fine English cut crystal decanter produced by, I don't know, Stuart Crystal. Uh, pattern is whatever. You can find your patterns. I've done videos on that. So you've got a quality, beautiful, fine English crystal cut glass decanter by Stuart Crystal standing at 13 inches tall in Star of Edinburgh pattern or whatever. Um, no chips, no cracks, no flaws. Fully signed to the base, take a photograph of the signature, a photograph of the label, whatever it got. Uh, you tell them how heavy it is, you say, do you know what, this is absolutely spectacular. You can't understand the quality of the photos. It's 1.2 kilos unpacked, that's how heavy it is, it's really good. Uh, however, you know, it's got a slight scratch or something like that, but it doesn't really affect it. But it's a beautiful item. That's how you got to describe it, guys. That enthusiasm will come across to the buyer... And they'll go, oh Christ, that scratch, I don't care about that. I want that item. And it will come across. I promise you it will come across. You've got to be engaging with them. All right. So you need all the facts. Anything you can possibly think of, get in that description. Anything that, if they start thinking, oh, well, I don't know how big that is. Um, maybe uh, i got to write them an email. I can't be bothered. I'll just skip on to another one. And that's exactly what they'll do. Now, some dealers now will take a chance because they know what they're buying. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Last week, uh, Richard, a gentleman comes to the shop, found a solid silver spoon on eBay by William Cummins. A really good name. And this spoon was on seven or eight pound on eBay, but there was no size, there was no weight, there was nothing. It was just a William Cummins spoon. That's all the description was. Anyway, I looked at it and I thought, you know what, that's, that's a decent thing, that is. And I bought it, and in total it cost me £21. Now, it should be £2 to £3 per gram for an item like that. I bought it in at 60 pence a gram. When it came, it weighed 30 grams, or just under 30 grams, and cost me £21 in total. £17 for the item plus postage. Now, realistically, it should be £2 to £3 a gram. He lost money. He really did. If he'd weighed that and said the size, now there would have been so many buyers would have bid on that, I wouldn't have had a hope in Allegheny. Right, so you really, really got to do that. Make sure all the details are in them listings, guys, and in the description. Right, uh, let me just check. Right, so that's pretty much it on the listings. Then you come down to the postage. Are you going to send it abroad? It opens up your market if you send abroad, but. You've got risks. If you send something to America and they're not happy because you've missed something on your description or it gets damaged or they're just not happy, you're going to have to pay the return postage. It does happen. Not very often. Um, but it does happen. Now, if you sell stuff to America, Australia, Russia, wherever, your sales will double or treble. So if you have overseas sales, you're going to sell a lot more. But I would recommend you charge them for international tracked or signed because you can't prove they've had it and if they want to open up a dispute with PayPal or eBay saying they haven't had it and you can't prove it, you automatically lose your money. So make sure you do everything tracked and you're better off losing an international buyer than you are to send it off, send a £30, £40 item off and £15 postage and they say, oh, do you know what, I didn't have it while well, it's sat there on the shelf. Now, they don't all do it. I've had complaints come in and I've lost the money and then a month later they said, you know what, it finally arrived, here's your money back. And that's Ray as well. But that happened. So not everybody does it, but you need to know, you need tracking on your postage, okay? And that goes for UK or abroad. That's, that's that exact same problem, no matter if it's overseas or UK. 
but to do it in the UK is a lot less money. So it's up to you. Do you want to ship overseas or not? I would recommend yes, depending on the item. You have to weigh it up on the cost of the item, the value of the item, where do they sell best. Egg coddlers go to Russia all the time. Um, you can't sell an egg coddler unless it's to Russia. So if you don't do them overseas, no point selling them. So you need to look at the item and weigh it up individually. Then when you wrap and send your item, for God's sake, you've worked really hard up to this point. You've bought the item, you've sourced it, you've cleaned it, you've got up at stupid o'clock in the morning, dig it out of a bloody junk box somewhere. You've packed it, you've listed it, you've weighted, you've invested your time, effort and money and love into it. Why would you not do the same in packing? Make sure it's packed well. If you've got to spend a little extra on postage and lose a little bit on postage or lose a, bit, a little bit on packing to make sure that item arrives there safe and tracked and signed, rather than losing the item totally, does not make sense. I've had so many losses over the years where I was learning where I thought, you know what, well, it's two pound to ensure that, I'm not sending that insured, I'll just send it. And then I lost the hundred pound. I promise you now, I'm not lying. I've learned the hard way. I'd rather lose one or two pound in that post office down by there than lose the item. Wrap it well. Use bubble wrap. Make sure, I've done a video on how to pack guys and how to ship, and how to pack and ship big items too. So, make sure you wrap the stuff well. You wrap it in bubble wrap. Use a firm cardboard box. Now, if you're sending overseas, you're, you're buggered because you're limited to two kilos, which again is why I said be careful on your selection of your items for overseas. But you want a really good, strong cardboard box. Um, lots of bubble wrap, then you want either peanuts or I, I do use, I'm cheap to be honest with you, I use really tightly packed newspaper scrumpled up and it does the job just fine. But I guarantee you, do you know the one thing I will do? I'll stand there with my parcel finished and I won't care if I drop it on the floor, I know 100% I could kick my parcel around the room because half the time that's probably what Royal Mail do. I watched a video on the news um, not that long ago actually where they were talking to the Royal Mail and while they were talking there, they were throwing parcels and letters across the room into boxes. If you are not confident that your parcel can be thrown across a room and survive, then you shouldn't send it. I promise you that now. Don't put all this work, all this effort and all this money and time and energy into an item for it to get ruined by the Royal Mail or the Post Office. Make sure it's safe and packed well. I think that's about it, guys. Because once the item's left, the all you've got left to do is uh, make sure it's logged in your accounts and you're away and you're on to the next one. And repeat again. So you could then have the sales tactic of wake up, buy it, sell it, and repeat. <laughs> Guys, I really hope this video has helped. Um, there's some good tips in there on how to improve your sales on eBay. And there's pros and cons on the buy it now versus the auction. It's entirely up to you what you choose. My preference is buy it now because I like to know what I'm going to achieve for my items. The only time I do the buy it now at uh, the auction is if I don't if I don't know the value or I, I, I'm struggling to value an item and I leave it find his own. But other than that, guys, honestly, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed. If you have, I would really appreciate the like and share, guys, uh, to help me and uh, help me keep subs uh, getting subscribers and help me keep making uh, the videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.